Hi everyone, welcome to Electronics with Professor Mughal. This is going to be one of my best videos ever. And the reason I say that it's because this video is about T20 cricket game. Yes, you hear me right. This is about T20 cricket game, which we are going to create using Verilog and then implement it onto an FPGA board. actually having goosebumps right now after listening to that song we have so much of memories from 1992 world cup as pakistan is because pakistan went on to win that world cup and i had to share it because i thought this is my only chance of sharing this theme song on my channel and i know that this visual graphic is from the different format of the game which is referred to as odis but i had to share it so if you are from subcontinent or australia or new zealand or england or any part of the world where cricket is played, you are going to love this video. And I hope you will enjoy it. So stay tuned, and I'm gonna show you how this FPGA T20 cricket board game works. Let's see, let's explore. The game is about to start. I have won the toss against me, so it's me against me. Okay, all right, so I'm gonna go through the rules of the game real quick now those of you who are familiar with the game of the cricket it's awesome it's easy for you to understand because you already know the game right but those of you who are not familiar with the with the t20 format of the cricket game i'm going to try to be a little slow and then hopefully you can catch up on some of the rules and if not then you may want to understand the game a little i'll leave the link in the description how or how the rules of the game work so that's where that way you know it's a lot more easier for you to understand so Let's start with the, with the game now. All right, so what you see here is a basis three board from Digiland, okay? So you got all the switches. If you're not familiar with the board itself, you got 16 switches here at the bottom. You also have 16 LEDs at the bottom. There are five push buttons, one in the middle, up, down, right, and left, and there are four digit seven segment display, okay? This button right here is a team switch button, the rightmost switch right here. Actually, not the button, the switch itself, okay? When this switch is positioned at zero, right now it's set to logic zero, means player one or team one is gonna play, okay? If I switch this position of the switch to up, then it means the logic is set to one, and therefore, innings two is in, in proceedings. So by default, I'm going to set the position for this switch to zero. And then you have this two push button that we are going to use. The middle push button is for the reset, okay? Anytime during the play, you press this button, the game will be reset, reset and it'll start all over again. This button right here, the up button, is going to simulate a delivery, meaning a ball being delivered, okay? So let's say team one uh, has won the toss and has elected to bet, okay? so. I'm going to press this button, and as I press this button, the uh, and a number will be. I'm not. I don't want to go through in through the algorithm at this point, but I just want to show how the board, the T20 cricket board uh, game works uh, function. So, all right, I'm gonna press the button. The algorithm, the algorithm design of this cricket game is gonna do the magic, and looks like 
Oh, looks like I pressed the button twice. So I scored three runs right now. Okay, these three digits right here will display the number of runs. This, the four digit is going to display the wickets. Then the LED will make a binary code of how many balls have been delivered. So basically a ball count, okay? So I'm gonna press this button one more time. And the logic goes to one one right here at the LEDs. That means three balls have been delivered. Score is four. And I'm gonna press it one more time, okay? Uh, 100 zero makes a code of four. Looks like I scored one run. Come on, folks, this is T20. Now, 110, this was the sixth ball. Looks like I scored more runs. Uh, another ball being delivered. Triple one makes a uh, ball count of seven. My score is nine right now. I'm gonna do it a little fast now. One triple zero makes this was the eight ball. Looks like, oh, wicket went down. Wicket went down. Lost the wicket here. Oh, all right, let's go. 101 makes a code of 9, uh, nothing scored of that ball, that was a dart ball, and I'll just keep on doing it. Come on, come on. Woo! Going fast, going fast, going fast. Those of you who are familiar with the game of the cricket, uh, the innings end in two ways. Either you run out of your 120 balls, like at the quota of the 20 overs, or you lose 10 wickets, looks like five wickets, five wickets are down. I don't know what kind of a code it makes for the ball count, but looks like the team is struggling right now with five down. Looks like there's a partnership building up right now. 88 for five. Now just keep on pressing this button, which simulates a delivery. Uh, remember this all, oh, there's a good partnership right here. Okay, 111, 113. 118 for 7, 2 wickets fell down in a quick succession. Okay, alright, keep going folks. We need, just need to score 150. 150 is enough, I think. Yeah. Come on, 138 for 8, 130, 142, come on. Let's get close to 150. Come on. And just keep on pressing 9 wickets down. One more wicket down and I'll be, the innings will be over. You know that, right? I'll be really careful now. I'll be pressing the button really careful. Okay, alright. Although it's against me against me anyhow i win but still you know okay 100 oh my god 161 for nine this is a really good score oh it looks like i lost the wicket and the innings over that means all wickets fell down i don't know so this the the seven rightmost leds make a ball count so i'm not sure 1101 zero, 011 one, one makes a count of 120 or not but Either ball count is up or I lost all 10 wickets. Okay, all right. Now, the team one has scored 162, I believe, right? Uh, now I have to switch to uh, team two, which will be chasing, right? Okay, so the score will be reset. The ball count will be reset. Innings to start. I need to chase down 162 runs, I believe. Yeah, I think that's what I scored. Okay, so. One run scored, awesome, team chasing. Six runs, yay! Okay, all right. Gonna keep on pressing, three balls, 10 runs. Oh my God, this, we are going really, really fast. Another four, two runs, five balls, one more ball in the over, and then 19 runs on the first over. That is a crazy start with no uh, loss of the wickets. That's awesome. So I'm gonna keep on, I'm gonna rush here so I can finish the game real quick. Remember we are chosen, ch uh, chasing 160 something. Okay, 74, 75 without the loss of the wicket. They are cruising, team two is cruising. I am cruising. Okay, come on, come on folks. 97, 98, 99, 100. Another 60 runs, come on. Okay. Looks like the run rate is going down a little. It must be a good ball. Okay, all the LEDs are light up. Okay, remember the rightmost seven LEDs, they are for the ball count, okay? Four wickets down! 145 for 4, 147, few more runs, we'll be done, I believe another wicket went down. Okay, alright, we're getting close, close. Looks like team 2 win! Awesome!
Um, well, when the team wins, it actually displays on the screen, followed by the scrolling LEDs. Okay, so that means the game is over, and I can press this middle button, reset the game, LEDs go out, the display on the seven segment gets reset. Okay, and I can switch this back. Okay, so that's your T20 cricket game designed using very lot implemented onto basis 3 FPGA board. Now, how to create this design, how to get the inside of this design, let's get started. We're gonna start out with looking at the algorithmic design of the T20 game, how uh, the flowchart looks like in terms of the design, and also the algorithmic design for the VCD display system uh, for the game. So, once you play, that means you when you, once you hit the button, that's when the cricket game starts. It simulates a ball being delivered to the batsman. And what's actually happening, once that button is pressed, the play button is pressed, it creates a random number generator using LFSR. And then in the range of 0 to 15. And depending upon what is the outcome of that number, a value is assigned to that number. And I'll give you one example right here. So say, if the LFSR random number is 0, 1, or 2, it will be considered as a zero run, that basically a dot ball, nothing being scored. So that means runs will be runs plus zero, balls will be ball plus one, and because 0, 1, 2, uh, 3, an LFSR numbers out of the 15 will count towards a dot ball so the probability of the outcome is basically 18.75 percent 3 divided by 15. Similarly if the outcome of the LFSR is 3 or 4 or 5 or 6 that is considered as one run so that would mean one run will be added to the runs and also to the balls because it was a legal delivery and therefore the probability of the outcome this time for batsman or when once you press the button the probability of one being added to the score is 25 percent uh, similarly if 12 is the outcome then of six values assigned to it and, and then added to the score and similarly we are also keeping track of extras 13 corresponds to extras 14 corresponds to extras also white ball and no ball and 15 accounts for a wicket okay so once the LFSR random number generator is 15, that means a wicket has fallen, runs plus zero, balls plus one because it was a legal delivery, and the wicket also increments by one. And uh, the probability of the wicket falling on when, a, when you press a button is 6.25%. I wanted to keep it low so that we have high scoring games, so that's more fun and excitement. Um, so. All right, I'm gonna go back here now at the flow chart. So is the value 15? We Remember 15 is a wicket. Yes, if the 15, the random number generator is 15, then the wicket goes up. Ball count also go up by one. Similarly, if the value, if it's not 15, then it checks for whether the value is 13 or 14. Remember 13 and 14 are extras, right? 13 and 14 are extras, white ball, no ball. That means the ball count will be zero, right? Ball count, uh, ball count, balls equals to balls plus zero, extras equals to extras plus one. If it's not 13 or 14, that means there has been some kind of run scored, right? So runs equals to runs plus assign value. But that could be zero, one, two, all the way to six, correct? Uh, and then, it gets to this box right here where it looks for whether either the 10 wickets have fallen or the ball count is equals to 120. So those of you who know the game of cricket, if any of the one any one of the event occurs, then the innings is over, right? So if that is the case, then innings is over and it looks for whether both innings have completed or not. Okay. If both innings have not been completed, then it's say display innings over. And we saw that once the first inning was over, it was displaying innings over. And then we switched the team to up position in order for the team one to start playing and proceed with their innings. If that is not the case, if the innings is not over, the first inning is not over, then it should display the current score and wicket for that team. 
Once both the innings are over, it then checks for whether the compare the scores and see if the game is a tie, whether the scores are same or not. If this game is not a tie, then it will compare scores, display the winner, like it was showing T or two earlier, and then it would say, and then followed by the game over celebration where LED will start scrolling back and forth, uh, and that's your end of celebration, uh, end of game celebration. If there's a tie, again, the T20 rule is the match restarts, but this time that ball count is going to be six, not 120. So if that's the case, each team gets six additional balls and then the score is compared back again. Okay, so that's how the algorithm is designed for the T20 cricket game. This is how it is. So the scoring really doesn't depend upon what are the pitch conditions, the quality of the batsman or a bowler, uh, uh, weather conditions, they don't matter at all. It's just for fun and it all depends upon the algorithm. Okay, let's look at the BCD display system algorithm here. Again, when the button is pressed, the input, uh, the a value is assigned. We just discussed that, right? What are the possibilities? Uh, dot ball, one run, two run, three, four, six runs, wide, no ball, wicket, ball. These are the all possibilities, uh, possible outcomes on any delivery. Uh, ball being delivered to the batsman on a, in cricket, correct? So if dot ball is the case, then runs equals to runs plus zero. If six runs have been scored, runs equals to runs plus six. If a white ball or a no ball, any extra, then extra count goes up by one. Runs also go up by one because you know that white ball and no balls are rewarded as one run. If the wicket has fallen, then the wicket counter goes up by one. And if the ball it's a legal delivery, then the ball count goes up by one. Once, uh, and then we have the display ball count, uh, which is basically the LEDs in this game, okay? The LEDs, the binary, they generate a binary number, which, uh, which is uh, the display, which is basically the ball count. Uh, wicked, the fourth digit, the rightmost seven segment is going to display the number of wickets, okay? And then the three digits on the left, they are going to display the runs. So the score is made up of the four, seven segment display. And then the LEDs are going to be used to display the ball count. So that's the algorithm part of the uh, cricket game. Okay. We now are going to move at the RTL schematic part of the T20 cricket design. Uh, and it basically tells you how each and every building block of the design is interconnected with each other and how it's working, how it's functional. Okay, so uh, this is right here. What you see on the screen is the high level design of the T20 cricket game. There are basically three components of it. The first component is basically this debounce module, which is CG0, cricket game O. Uh, because we have the play button and the game reset button, and you know, because of the mechanical nature of these push buttons on the FPGA boards, you need to have the debouncing uh, module. What it does basically, uh, when the button is pressed, uh, because of the mechanical nature of the push button, the signal bounces back and forth several times before it stabilizes. And we don't want that to happen because if you don't include that debounce module, once you press the button, it will just think that multiple times the button has been pressed and the score will go crazy, okay? So second and the most important part of the T20 cricket des uh, game design is the cricket game itself, okay? And then followed by the BCD display. Uh, these are the three main components of the T20 cricket game. I am going to mostly focus upon cricket game. And the reason for that is because in my previous videos, I have already done debounce. Uh, you can find the card here or the slide over here or over here. And also BCD display I have done in the past. And again, you will see the card uh, above. So focus will be on the cricket game. Now let's look at what is inside a cricket game. This is what exists inside a cricket game. I might want to zoom in a little more. Okay, we have the LFSR and I told you this T20 game is solely based upon the algorithmic uh, design is based upon uh, a random number being generated, a four bit number. Okay, so you have the clock coming in, that's the FPGA clock, which is 100 megahertz from for basis three. Uh, then you have a game reset button. 
in LFSR. Uh, and I'm going to go into more detail once we start coding. Team score module is capable of adding up the number of runs being scored and it's an 8 bit as you can see it's 8 bit so it can actually go up to 256 uh, and usually we rarely go uh, above 256 in a t20 game so i wanted to be uh, able to count up to 256 using the three seven segment display uh, and then uh, for the wicket i just only needed one display right so uh, four bit for that and eight bits for runs so count eight plus four that makes twelve. So we have a team score which will be uh, will will make up of uh, twelve bits, right? Uh, and then wickets right here, like I said. Then at the bottom we have an LED controller. What LED controller is doing is actually keeping track of the the ball count for both the team team one and team two, and also for the end of game celebration. So once the game is over, the sixteen LED they start scrolling back and forth. So the inputs to that are game over, innings, LFSR, reset, game reset, team switch, clock, and uh, the play button, which is the delivery. Okay. And then the final uh, sub-module within the T20 cricket game is actually the score competitor. Again, it's one of the important modules within the T20 cricket game. Uh, game. Uh, what this is doing is basically comparing the two scores and then deciding whether... Uh, the game is over or not, who is the winner, and also at the same time, it's keeping track of the ball count to decide whether the innings is over or not. When the both innings are over, that means the game is over and the winner will be announced. And that's what score competitor is doing. And it actually throws out this information to BCD seven segment display uh, to be displayed on the basis three board. So that's like a high level design and going into each and in individual module and see how they are connected. Let's now move on to the coding part of it. And like I said, you know, there are three components, debounce, cricket game and BCD display. I'm mostly going to focus on the cricket game design because uh, uh, I've already done BCD display in my previous videos and the debounce as well. So the first module is LFSR. Okay, uh, because this, this was a huge project. I could not do the coding real time, so I've already done it and I have commented. I will leave the code in the uh, in the description, so you should be able to look at the code and get help from it uh, if needed. Okay, so a little bit of theory about the LFSR. So if I can show you here. By the way, this is the uh, block diagram of the debounce module where we are using D flip flops, two consecutive D flip flops using a slow clock of 10 hertz to create a single pulse output. Uh, then we have the LFSR, it's right here. It's actually of the six bit length. And then the Q1 and the Q0, they go into exclusive OR gate, create a uh, logic right here, which is then feed it into uh, Q5. Uh, by default, we seed the value to this LFSR. Uh, uh, basically all bits are set to one. And we only take the, uh, four least significant bits to create an LFSR output. Okay, so let's look at the code right here. The length of the uh, bit length is uh, six. So we have zero to five created an error here, the output over here, LFSR, and then the reset over here, correct? And then the clock, which is feeded. Uh, when the positive edge of the clock, which is the of the basis three board comes in, if the reset button is pressed, then it goes feeds back uh, the re the seeded value, which is we uh, which is basically all ones. Um, if not, then it will basically perform this option right here. Like I said, what it's doing is taking the bits Q1 and Q0, uh, getting into uh, doing an exclusive oring those two, and then feeding it back into Q5, and then we are only taking. Q0, Q1, Q2, and Q3 to create an LFSR output, which is over here. Okay, so shift, uh, only taking the four output of, that's the output of your LFSR. So that's a very simple coding for LFSR. Also, believe it or not, I've done LFSR also in my previous, and again, you'll find a card above, okay? Let's move on to team score. So here, the inputs are the clock, game reset, we have the play button, the ball being delivered. 
Then you have the pink switch, the LFSR because LFSR uh, random number is generated and then the value is assigned, correct? Uh, input, game over, and then output will be the runs, wickets, and score for both the teams, right? Here we are just using the local parameter command and assigning a value to all the possibilities we can have for number of run uh, or run being scored on a ball. Okay, now let's look at what's happening in this part of the code. If the reset button is pressed, that means everything needs to be restored, right? Reset. Uh, runs, wickets, uh, and scores for both the teams. Okay, else if the game is over, then it should display runs, wickets, team score for team one and team two both, right? If the play button is pressed, then what should happen? Well, remember the table that I was showing you earlier? depends upon the outcome of the LFSR. If the outcome is 0, 1, 2, then it, it's a dot ball. So the runs will be added, zero runs will be added here. A legal delivery will be count, so the ball count will go up by one. So that's what's happening here. Case, you're using a case statement here for LFSR output. If the random number generator is either zero, one, or two, then team one score remains same. It does not change this. Three, four, five, six, that means a single, single has been scored, right? One run has been scored, so the team score goes up by one, okay? We are doing this for team one, and then we are also doing it for team two. Uh, what this is doing here, we are doing this for team one, right? Team one is when the switch is in the down position, creating a logic of zero. So the invert of zero will be one, and then one ending with wickets less than 10, uh, that will be the increment score of team one. Okay, so that means it's going to do the increment for team one, not team two. Okay, when the switch, the position of the switch is reversed, that means now it's one and it's ending with wickets less than 10. That means it is supposed to increase number of runs, ball count and wickets for team two, not team one. And same logic here. Okay, same logic here. You're using the case statement for the LFSR. All right, and then followed by the team score. Um, remember the eight bits uh, or from the, mo the eight most significant bits, they uh, represent runs on the display and the least four least significant bits, they display wickets uh, on the display. And again, here we're doing a case statement for the team switch. If team switch is set to zero, then you should display runs for team one and wickets for team one. And if it switched to one, then it displays runs and wickets for team two. Okay, so that's basically the uh, Verilog coding for the team score module. I'm now going to move on to the score competitor. Okay, where remember score competitor is responsible for making sure if the ball count is 120, if the end the innings is over or the 10 wickets have fallen or not comparing the two scores and making sure who is the winner and then followed by the end of game celebration correct right okay all right so these are the inputs and the outputs over here we now have uh, this part of the court what it does basically if the currently selected team has 120 balls or 10 wickets their innings is complete okay so if the wickets greater than or equal to 10 or ball count is 120, then innings over for the first team, okay? Else, innings should get uh, basically zero. Basically, we are trying to display IO on the screen, okay? Now, this part of the code, it's doing the same thing, but for the team two, if both teams either reach 120 balls or have lost 10 wickets, end the game. That's what we are doing over here. And then over here, on the rising edge of the game, lock in the winner. It's basically going to compare the two scores. Again, it's basically comparing the two number of runs, right? Uh, the first eight most significant bits. Uh, whoever is the winner, it's going to display that on the board. If the winner lock gets to zero, then team one wins. If not, then team two wins, okay? So that's the code for the score comparator, followed by the LED controller. Remember, LED controller was responsible for 
the ball count for the, both the teams and also for the end of game celebration, correct? So these are the inputs and outputs over here, okay? Uh, we're declaring the scrolling LEDs as wire here. Uh, count up the balls and update the LEDs. Okay, if the reset button is pressed, then LED count goes to zero and the ball count for both the team gets to zero also. If the game over, then LED will start scrolling, uh, which is basically the scroll LEDs. Um, scroll LEDs is another module that I have done previously. You can find the card above. Uh, I'm not gonna go through the code because otherwise it's gonna be a huge video. Uh, again, you can find how the scrolling LEDs work. So I'm just calling that function, uh, that module over here. Uh, else, if play, if the play button is pressed, then it is what it's doing is basically increment the balls only if the team one inning is not over. Okay, and then it will keep track of the of the of the balls. Here what it's doing is basically uh, these are the white balls and the no balls 13 and 14 and by default it will display the ball count. Um, LEDs gets the ball count right here um, and similarly here it, it does it for increments the ball only if the team two's inning is not over. So this is the same thing but this time doing it for team two. Uh, if the outcome of the LFSR is 13, 14, that's an extra. So the team ball count remains same. It does not change. Uh, otherwise, the team two ball count goes up by one. Followed by the end case, LEDs get team two ball count. Just like we had LEDs, team one ball count here. Okay. And then finally, if the team switch um, is in the one position, that means uh, LEDs should display the ball count for team one and if the team switch is in the one position means the up position it should display the ball count for team two uh, and then here is instantiating the scrolling LEDs uh, module here for the end of game celebration okay so uh, this is your t20 cricket game now that I have everything in there I'm gonna do the synthesis and implementation generate a bit stream file and then load it up on our basis three board and that will be it our t20 cricket game design is ready taking forever this is a huge project it's taking forever to do the implementation let's see how it goes i hope i don't have any errors Finally, the implementation is complete. It took me five minutes and 49 seconds. Yes. Okay, all right. So once you have that, now all we need to do is to create a bit, bit stream file and then program the code onto the FPGA board. And if you are interested in actually looking at the article analysis, the schematic level, all you need to do is click on the schematic right here. Click OK. And hopefully it should give you an article schematic that I was showing you at the beginning of this video. Again, because it's a big um, program, it's going to take a little bit of time. So you need to be patient uh, while doing this. So here is your RTL schematic right here. Um, again, as I was showing you, there are the three main components of this T20 cricket game. D-bounce, cricket game, BCD display. You can click on this plus icon right here to look at what is inside each module. Um, and that's exactly what I was showing you uh, also if you want to save it you can also right click here and then save it as a PDF file or export schematic um, if you if something you know that you want to do okay let's move on to generating bitstream file click OK before I go I forgot about the uh, the constant file okay so the constant file and again I'll leave the link in the description you got the FPGA clock right here this is the team switch right we're only using one switch that's for the team switch we got 16 LEDs four seven segment decimal point is used to separate the number of runs and wickets the four enable for the four seven segment display and then we have what we have two push buttons one for the play one for the game reset uh, and that's 
all pretty much we have in. We are just providing 3.3. Um, you don't have to worry about this part of the constraint file until unless it gives you a warning. It gives you this DRC checks LUTPLP1 warning, then you might want to include these lines, these five lines here. If not, then don't worry about it. Okay, so I'm just overriding these errors, um, basically warnings. So, okay, the let's click on generate bitstream file, click OK. The bitstream has been created. All we need to do now is to connect your basis three board to your computer, make sure it's powered on. All you need to do is click on open hardware or just click on auto connect. Um, I am going to open target, auto connect, and then program the device, upload the bitstream file, and that's it. Your T20 cricket game on FPGA board is ready. Okay, alrighty. Here, it's only up there. Program. All done. Yay! Well, that's it. That's it for today's video folks I hope you enjoyed the game uh, I know it was too much you can always go back uh, and look at some of the videos that I have uh, uploaded previously because uh, I don't know I could not go all of it right so uh, I hope you have learned from it if you have any question please leave uh, your question in the comments below uh, and don't forget to watch the videos before you start working on it otherwise you're not gonna get it okay Enjoy your rest of the day, stay safe, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Here, here, I don't know, wherever it is, just subscribe to the channel, tell your friends about this channel, and have them subscribe, okay? Bye, see you later.